This one is on, and this one is going live. Checking connection. You're now live. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Wait till people file in. We're going to open up the hips. We're going to move the body. It's going to feel so nice. And these outer glutes, we're going to really kind of open and stretch out. Front side of knees. My knees are killing me, so that's what we're going to do. And then core, an isometric core, meaning that we're going to be more solid and still rather than movement core. Stability and core, building core is Mama. the best. Um, um, core is the best for everything that you might be doing. So if you're starting to run, or if you're starting to jump rope, or you're starting to walk more, then Wendy. core stability. Oh, wow. Core stability is so important to keep the structural body safe and in line and in tune. The more that we work the core, the more the rest of the body falls. Oh, hello, suit. Hillary. Oh, hi. Um, so we'll just wait for people, some people to file in. Um, we'll also be posting this class after too. So anytime we do live, we usually we'll try to post it the next day just in case you don't have social media or if you missed out, um, you never miss out. So that's for you. Um, fire nice if you're just coming in and you're just arriving, waves. I'm trying to stretch out the left side of our body, especially the glutes, upper hip region and build core suitability. So doing that isometrically on the ground and we'll get that. We'll get there. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. All the things. So Jess Wagner. Yeah Jess. Yeah yeah. Um so we'll pair it with some animal flow stuff which um I got sent from Jess Wagner so we'll try some of that and um help with the running that I know that you started running which is always great. Me too and uh, work it out, work it out, work that DJ Shaka Tech, Shaka Music. <laughs> Welcome, I'm so glad that everyone can stop in and check out this video and this live. We'll post it also afterwards on our YouTube channel, so check out more videos from there. We will be posting, hopefully- Ah, Chris Gazing, I think. Is that yeah, who he yeah. is? That would be awesome. Um, Time's so, we're just going to give us a few more minutes just to file in some more people. All you need is a mat. There's no extra props. If you'd like to have a block or a bolster with you for your anshavasana, do that. But you don't need anything. Basically, just your body. Well, you wear body resistance. Uh, core is the emphasis, as well as stretching the outside of our glutes, especially if we're running and we're noticing any knee issues. It could be radiating from the posterior side of our bodies. Core is always the best to work on. So if you have five minutes, you have 10 minutes in your day, just that you want to take some movement breaks, isometric, stationary core is the best. So I'll give you some wicked techniques on that one. Um, so that's all I got to say. So I think we're just gonna get into it. So if you have a glass of water, have it nearby, set up your space so that you're comfortable and you're set. I have two mats, you don't need two mats. I just have different perspectives to show you if something's confusing so that you can see my side profile and also my front profile. And uh, so we'll start. We're gonna start seated, bringing the soles of the feet together and allowing the hands to wrap and interlock lock around the toes. And you can sway back and forth onto the sit bones, closing the eyes. Notice how I'm coming a little bit off the ground with one hip and then the other, slowly bringing some fluid into my joints. Let's come into a little bit more stationary position. Roll the shoulders down the back, drop the chin. At the same time, I'm squeezing my feet together, my heels together. Squeeze the bum, pin the shoulders onto the spine. Take a breath in. Exhale, let that go. Let's squeeze everything into center. Shoulders pinned down away from the ears. Squeeze the bum, breath in. Exhale, round, relax the spine. Let's do one more. 
straighter spine, shoulders down, look down towards the heels, squeeze the feet together, long breath in, hold, exhale, relax. Right, bring the hands around the thighs to close up the thighs. Hands either wrap around the wrist or elbows, pulling the chin closer towards the chest. Every time you notice the shoulders creeping up towards the ears, pull them away from the ears down the back. Pull the shoulders back, belly in. Okay, bring the hands behind the back of the body, take the feet mat with distance apart. I'm just going to slowly windshield wiper the legs. Not that it's a twist, don't use it as a twist, but you're rolling on the outside of those glutes and the hips. I'm just starting to awaken the muscles and saying hello and turning them on a little bit. So when we find movement, sometimes movement can tell the muscles to do what we want it to do, especially if we're disconnected from the muscle. And let's just do this a couple more times. Readjust the position whenever you need, dropping the knees as far as your range of motion is to the floor, coming through center, and then all the way over to the other side. Let's do one more set. Feet are wide, knees to the right, come through center, and all the way to the left. Let's come back. Let's roll into a tabletop position. Hips over knees. Let's keep the toes tucked. So when we tuck the toes, we're moving into some flexibility within the bottoms of the feet. Spread the fingertips wide. Bring more space between the fingers. Shoulders out of the ears. Take a breath in, drop belly, open chest. Exhale, round the spine into a cat spine. Push against the toes, take an inhale, drop belly, open through the chest. Exhale, push through the hands as you round into the central line of the body. And one more to your depth. Breath in, full expansion of the lungs. Exhale, close and empty the lungs in. Come back through. Let's take the knees right underneath the belly button. So the toes are going to stay tucked underneath the body. The difference from beast or static beast to tabletop is that we're closer underneath the body with the legs. Spread the toes, drive into the hands, lift the knees to hover over the floor. So notice I'm not far away from the ground. If you imagine grass, I'm just grazing against the grass with my knees. I want to be pushed through the toe mount, shoulder blades pull across the back. Notice how the core has to fire up. See if you can steady the breath. Breath out. Keep the eyes down, soft in the face. Inhale, lift the hips high. Shrug the shoulders, pull belly closer towards the thighs, draw through the hands. So high hip beast, you're trying to lengthen through the legs. You're shrugging the shoulders, so a different mobility through the shoulder joint. Take a long breath in. Exhale, slowly back into your beast position. Shoulders pull out of the ears. Knees lower towards the floor. Return onto the toes and the core. Breath in. Breath out. Inhale, high hip beats. Shrug the shoulders. Push through the toes. Look towards the top of the kneecaps. Breath in. Exhale, lower the knees. Last beast here. Find your breath. Hover the knees. A paper with distance from the floor. Lean into the toes. Exhale, lower the knees down. Let's walk the hands forward, untuck the toes, come forward with the chest. Exhale into cat. One more, pushing to the tops of the feet, inhale. Exhale into cat. Right into your downward facing dog. Lift the hips, position the feet. Shoulders roll away from the ears. So unlike upward or beast, Upward facing beast, I can't even remember what that is called. You're unshrugging the shoulders and downward dog. It's a difference. Now you don't have to expand to the back of the knees. You can be high into the toes, knees can bend, hips can pull back and up. Right. Focus on the shoulder blades down and pinning towards the central line of the spine. Take a breath in. Exhale the breath out. 
One more breath in. Exhale to empty. Look towards the top of the mat. Take your time as you tiptoe forward towards the top. Toes together, heels slightly apart. Hands below the knees. Inhale, half back, weight forward. Exhale, full, bend the knees, tuck the chin, drop the tips of the fingertips down. Find an inhale, come forward, lengthen long body, shoulders out of the ears. Exhale, bend the knees, let the shoulders collapse, head hangs heavy. One more, breath in, half back. Exhale, fold. Good, inhale, sweep all the way back up, look towards the thumbs. Exhale, hands towards the center line of the chest. Let's take a long breath in. Even longer, sigh out. Now we're going to roll the shoulders, keeping the hands together. Take an inhale, roll the shoulders up by the ears and slightly forward. Exhale, roll them down and back. Let's find two more. Inhale, roll them up. Exhale, roll them down and back. Inhale. Exhale. Full mobility of the shoulder blades. Inhale, roll the shoulders all the way up. Exhale, hinge shoulders, roll all the way out and down. Take an inhale, half back, hands against the shins. Exhale, fold, longer legs. Inhale, sweep all the way up, roll, lift, look up. Exhale, hands towards the center line of the chest, look down. One more like that. Inhale, roll the shoulders, look up. Exhale, pull the hands out, all the way down towards the toes. Inhale, hands on shins, half back. Exhale, fold longer legs. Inhale, come all the way back up, look to thumbs. Follow the gaze all the way down through the center line of the chest. Hands on hips. Cross the right leg over the left. So you're going to try to pin through both feet. If you can bring the toes in line with each other, great. If the right foot needs to be slightly forward, no big deal, right? We're going to try to find that depth of the stretch into the right side of the body. Left hand onto the hip, sweep the right arm all the way up. Take a breath in, shoulders down and back. Exhale, up and over. You're using the left hand to deepen the side body stretch all the way through. Cross the right leg over, push through the right foot, draw the shoulders down and back. Take a breath. See if you can deepen. One more. Push into the right foot, inhale, come all the way through center. Relax the hands beside the body. Unwind the right leg. Cross the left leg over. Remember, toes in line or slightly forward. Anchor through the legs, right hand onto hip. Take an inhale, lift the right arm up. Exhale, draw the shoulder blades down. Breath in. Exhale, up and over. So I'm using my hand, right, my right hand, to kick that left hip away from the center line of the body. At the same time, push through my left foot that's crossed over to anchor, to find depth. Shoulders out of the ears, breath in. And breath out. Slowly come back to center. Unwind the arms, unwind the legs, full float. Inhale, sweep all the way up. Exhale, hinge, longer legs, elbows forward. Inhale, half back, push against the shins. Exhale, plant the hands, step back into your high plank position. So you're right back on those toes and spread the toes wide. Take a long breath in. Exhale, lower the knees. Pull the chest forward, push into the tops of the feet as you come down towards the ground. Cobra position, inhale, lift just the chest. Exhale, roll back through the arms, straighten the arms. Come back into your downward facing dog. So as you get more and more elasticity through the body, meaning that you're warming up the body, find your edges of your pose. Concentrate on the tips of the shoulder blades pulling towards the center of the spine. The hips pulling back and up. Depth of the breath in and out through the nose if you can. Toes together. Take a look forward. Bend the knees so they almost touch the floor. 
Initiate the movement from the center of the hips. Hop forward. Take a breath in, half back, lift the chest. Exhale, fold longer legs. Inhale, sweep all the way back up, look up. Exhale, hands towards the center line of the chest. One more like that. Inhale, roll the shoulders. Exhale, pull elbows forward, hips back, fold. Inhale, half back, finish this for a shin. Exhale, plant the hands, high plank position. Focus on the toes, spread them wide, shoulder blades across the back. Inhale, roll forward into the tips of the toes. Exhale, lower the knees as slow as you can. Make your way down towards the floor on that exhale. Once you hit, inhale, lift. Exhale, roll back through the knees. Lift through the hips, roll back through the feet, downward facing dog. Find stillness if you can. Hop the feet together. Look forward, hop forward. Inhale, half back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep all the way back up. Look towards the thumbs. Exhale, hands back towards the center line of the chest. Take a breath in, looking forward. Exhale, breath out. Let's bring more depth in. Right foot crosses over, right where we were in that side body. Reach the right arm all the way up, keeping the left hand or left arm beside the body. Breath in, exhale up and over. So I'm sliding my fingertips down towards the top of that knee, or the side knee. Push deeper through the right foot. You're breathing more and more space through those ribs. If you want to take the left arm across the body, reach it to the right. Stay strong with the breath. Inhale, come back through center. Unwind the arms and the legs. Let's flush that out. Roll the shoulders, inhale up. Exhale, roll the shoulders, long legs as you hinge into your forward fold. Fingertips down, inhale, half back. Exhale, belly closer to thighs. Inhale, all the way back as you unwind the spine. Exhale, hands to the center line of the chest. Cross the left leg over. Position your feet. Stand taller, right arm beside the body, lift the left arm up. Shoulders away from the ears. Breath in. Exhale, up and over. Remember, you can hang out here, right? If you're not crossing across the midline of your body. Try not to collapse, but push deeper through the left foot. If using the right arm, reach. Like you're using a rope and pulling against the rope on the left hand and a rope on the left right hand. Breath in. Breath out. Push through the feet. Inhale, slowly unwind. Exhale, release the feet. Let's come through that flow. Inhale, sweep up, roll. Exhale, elbows forward, hips back. Inhale, long back. Exhale, plank the hands, high plank position. We're going to hold high plank. Shoulders pull across the back, just like if you were in beast position. Drive through the index and thumbs. Lift the right toes to hover over the floor. Slowly drop the right toes. When they connect, lift the left toe, shoulders out of the ears. Try not to lock the right knee. Breath in. Breath out. Dropping the left toes. Second set. Inhale, slowly lift the right. Try not to distort the body. Breath in. Lower the right. Inhale, lift the left. Feels like everything pulls towards the belly button. Stay with the breath. Looking down. Exhale, lower the left. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale into your full downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward, high plank. Exhale, lower the knees. Keep the toes tucked. Come into a sprawl. Sprawl, keep shoulders stacked over hips. Pulling belly forward, using the toes to squeeze the bum together. All right. Let's lift the hips. Once you come into your downward dog, take a shorter stance. Shorter stance, shoulders out of the ears. Maybe lift the heels, maybe bend the knees. Taking the right hand, cross it underneath the body, reach to the outside of the left heel. 
Now that doesn't mean that you're twisting your whole body and collapsing. You want shoulders in line with hips, as steady through the toe mounds or heels as you can, look underneath the armpit. It's the strength of the shoulder blades. Coming back through center, don't lose the short downward dog. Play it through the right, lift the left hand. Grab to the outside of the ankle, the calf, or the thigh. Right, You'll know where your range of motion is. Try to keep the left shoulder tapped, looking underneath the right. Anchor through the left. Right, When we move out of one side, right, my left hand, I have to compensate with the left heel. Unwind, take it back to your downward facing dog. Take a breath in, take a long breath out. Inhale, roll forward to your high plank position. Hold high plank, shoulders out of the ears. Let's bring the right knee forward, right knee between the hands, lower the left knee down. Untuck the back toe, tap the fingertips, reach the chest forward. So I'm leaning my groin onto my heel. Let's tuck through the back left toes, lift the back knee. Right, so trying to get into that range of that upper groove, it's a hard one to get to, right? You push against it like the heel is pushing against a wall. Squeeze the bum might help. You're going to drop the left knee down, plant through the hands, come back to that downward facing dog. Pedal it out, pedaling out, bending one knee or the other. This is where you'll notice alignment, right? If your knee is pulling out or in, you want it straight. Align with that middle toe or that second toe. All right, let's lift the left. Pull the left knee to the center line of the hands, drop down, heel line of the groin. Untuck the toe first to lift through the chest. Pelvis and shoulders together, facing forward. And then tap over the back toe. Without a lot of shifting, extend through the right leg, squeeze the glutes. Now the breath is going to help. Stretch the core, front abdominals. Okay, drop the knee, plant the hands, come back through that downward facing dog, pedal that side out. So you have these little breaks in your body. One, to keep the shoulders down and back. You want to build power. Let's drop the knees down. Knees in line with the toes. You're going to keep the toes tucked. Walk the hands to push the bum towards the heels. So as you notice, as you pull the bum further back and you're anchored through the heels of the hands, the knees are going to want to lift off the ground. Right? You can try that a couple of times. Nishat and Sasha through the toe joints. That's going to be important as we move through some of this animal flow range. Okay. So a wave on low. Hands come forward. Hips pull back. Keep the toes spread wide. Look down towards the ground. Don't worry how low you get. Just practice. Hips pull back. Knees draw forward to lift and hover over the ground. So good for the range of motion. Shoulders have to power up. Eyes are straight down towards the floor. Now just focus on the head. You're going to pull the chest, chin towards the chest. Keep it there. Inhale, high hip beast. Shrug the shoulders. Next inhale, roll forward. Keep the chin tucked. Come through high plank. Lower through towards your sprawl. Once the knees come down, then open through the face, the throat. Look all the way up. Breath in. Retuck. Keep it tucked the whole time. Then tuck up through the pelvis. Shrug the shoulders. Slowly roll and wave it back. Drop the knees to hover. Look to the floor. One more. Tuck the chin. Inhale. Lift. High hip beast. Inhale. Roll for it. Keep the chin tucked. All the way, all the way until you lower the knees. Sprawl to open up the face. The throat. Inhale. Look up. Exhale, unwind, all the way through, high hip beats, all the way down, loaded beats, look to the floor, 
Drop the knees wide, untuck the toes, give them a bit of a break. Turn the palms up to give the wrists a bit of a break. Sway the hips back and forth. <sighs> Moving your body feels so good. Right, Claire? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright, while we're down in this range of motion, let's come into a little bit of a puppy stretch. So my hips are far back, my belly is coming close to the floor. Take the chin to pull it forward, dropping the chest down. The same action, you're pulling the shoulder blades down. If that's too much, you can come slightly onto the forearms looking forward. But think of opening the throat, opening through the chest. Just crawl forward onto the forearms, pull the knees closer together. Tuck underneath the toes, lift the hips, tuck the chin, and you're right into dolphin downward facing dog. Now it's harder to drop the heels without losing the spine the length that you want it, so keeping the knees bent, the heels lifted. If you can drop the crown of the head onto the floor, great. It doesn't have to get there. Shoulder blades move across the back. Right? We're trying to stabilize the shoulder girdle. Find the breath a bit deeper. Now, fun part, lower the knees to hover over the floor. Look forward to the thumbs, roll forward to pop into a high plank position. Exhale, come back, downward facing dog. Roll the biceps away from the ears, find your breath. Find your breath out. Let's come down onto the knees. Let's give our shoulders just a little bit of a break. Either you can stay flat onto the feet, I lost my little hair tie, let's redo that. Or you can tuck underneath the toes. Right? One will be different than the other, but you'll know what you want to do. I'm going to stretch out the shoulders by taking the arm up and overhead. Oh, my hair is a whole mess. Claire's like, this, don't do this. <laughs> As you take the elbow behind the head, notice how I want to pop my ribs. Keep the ribs tucked in. As best you can, dropping the heels towards the bum or the hips towards the heels. The same is true if you're in this position, right? We're doing two different ways. So this is good for Hillary if she's still on there for ankle mobility. Toes, instead of rolling out, they're rolling in. Spread the toes across the floor. Now pop in the belly, pull and tuck in. release, taking the arm across the body, cradle the right arm with the left. So my right hand has that mobility to make small rolls with my wrist, which feels really nice, right? After being on the hands for a bit of time, we're going to get back there. And you can make one roll, one direction, and then that fist the other direction. If you're on your toes and you like to flatten toes, you can come back there. Let's come into the other side. Let's bring the left elbow up and overhead, tuck the chin, and then start to open the face, open the throat. So eventually what you're looking for is a long spine. Right? But when I say eventually, it could be over time. Elbow can be out here. You might be holding the armpit, shoulders down and back. You're looking for your range of motion, right? Closing the ribs in and finding the rhythm of breath. Let's unwind. You want to come back up onto the toes, keep the heels together, right? Anchoring through, making a fist with the left hand and making those rolls. One direction and then the other direction. And then let's shake it out. So let's take the elbows back behind us, open the chest. And then we'll roll it forward. Let's drop with our hands down. So we're going to move back into beast position. We're going to do a side kick through, but it's more of a stretch. So planting the hands, shoulders pull <laughs> sure across. Sure, jump. <laughs> shoulders pull across the back. Remember, beast knees are underneath the belly button. We need to take the knees a little bit wider. So we're going to find a different position. You're going to keep the hands down. Heel. Stretch the left leg, point the toe, pull the elbow back in this first set. 
Then we come back through center, drop the left hand back down, come knees wide, and do that pulse, shoulders stacked over wrist. So lifting the left, drop the back heel, the right heel, point the left toe, pull the elbow back, a little shoulder, try to keep the right foot parallel. Breath in. Exhale, come back, drop the right hand down, knees wide onto the toes. This time, we're going to try to keep the arms or the hands down onto the mat. Lift the right toes, drop the back heel, straighten the right leg, drop onto that right side of the body. Push through both hands, lift the right leg, come back through center, let the knees come wide, weight over the wrists. Lift the left toes, drop the back heel, both hands. Draw the right toe, keep it pointed, drop the bum down. Let's come back through center. Toes are still, our heels are still lifted, knees wide. Let's close it in, beast position, knees in line with the toes. Drop the knees down. Unwind the toes, come down onto the elbows, elbows pinned together, hands interlock, let's stretch and roll with the wrist. We're going to do some side kick throughs. We're just going to give those a little bit of a try. Don't let them freak you out. Right, they're fun, so let them be fun. Okay, so the key is we're going to try to find that back foot parallel towards the floor. This is really good core activation. I'll tell you what. Okay, so hands are planted. Remember, we're trying to roll out the wrist so we have more mobility. Anchor through the hands, shoulder blades, pull across the back. Starting from beast, you're gonna lift the knees to hover. Initiate the movement with the right toes. Kick towards the left, right? So I'm coming under my body. Drop the left heel, pull the elbow back. Keep the heel lifted, or hip lifted. To come back, drive through the left hand, place the right toe, come right into the other side, let the elbow take the motion back. Let's find two more. Draw the right hand down, hop, take the opposite leg, the right leg through, elbow back. Drive the left hand down, right leg underneath, hop, drop the right heel, kick the left leg through, good, come back through center, Hop the feet back into beast position. Inhale, high hip beast. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk the feet further back, shoulders out of the ears. Let the head hang heavy. Sway the hips back and forth. Let's inhale, roll forward into a high plank position. Lower the knees, lower the body all the way to the floor. Take the legs out wide. Forward Shavasana, slow down the heart rate. You can even shake out the bum. Let the heels slightly fall in. Close the legs off together. So the inseam of the legs, those toe mounds are pulling together. Instead of spinning the heels, you want to pull the toes wide. Baby toe finds the ground, right? So there's both that external and internal rotation of the legs. Kneecaps lifted. Now you're really strong in the legs. Let's sweep the fingertips forward, look towards the thumbs. Shoulders out of the ears. Now practice with breath. So the tops of the feet pushing down, so are the fingertips. Trying to find the space between the ribs and the hips connected towards the floor. Inhale, lift the right leg so the thigh comes off the ground. Lift the left arm. Lower the right leg, the left fingertips. Once they touch down, lift the left, lift the right. Inhale first, exhale, lower down. Let's go right into the other side, the right to the left. Inhale, 
Inhale first. Exhale, lower lift left to right. Don't lose that core. Don't lose this sleg. Breath in. Exhale, lower fingertips, both sides of the feet. Now you got it. Superman, stretch the legs and the arms. Find the breath. Let's hold. Now holding breath. Lift the biceps higher, thighs higher. Breath in. Breath out. One more. Exhale, relax. Relax the body, back body, shake out the bum, sway the hips back and forth. All right, draw the legs together. Pull the right knee towards your right elbow. Come up into a sphinx position. So the goal is trying to lengthen the inseam of the leg in line with the knee. So half frog position. You're not leaning all the way to the right or to the left. Try to anchor through your actions through the inside of the knee, pushing down. Let that left quad start to relax. the floor. Let's come into the other side. Left knee to left elbow. Once you're there, anchor through. Come into your sphinx position looking forward. So you're tucking the elbows into the body. Instead of pushing through the right foot, can you push to the inside of the left knee? Try to get the left hip down towards the ground. fingertips to help drop the chest down. Push yourself into a child's pose. Knees together or knees wide. Settling through the forehead, turning the palms up. Eventually trying to search for heel to touch the bum. If you're not there quite yet, don't worry about that. Right? That's your range of motion. And how active you want your child's pose to be. Slowly come back into tabletop position. Stretch that all out with a nice downward facing dog. Shoulders out of the ears. Anchor through the heels of the hands, either toe mounds or heels of your feet. Now if you're really tight in the back of the knees, I want you to bend the knees, pull the hips back and then up. Search for the spine rather than the back of the legs. They'll come. Toes together. If you're hopping forward, remember initiating from the center line of that sacrum. Come forward with the hips. Inhale, half back. Exhale, fold. Let that unwind. Inhale, slowly come all the way back up. Look to the thumbs. Exhale, hands towards the center line of the chest. And taking a long breath in. Even longer breath out. Anchor through the hips or through the heels, hands onto the hips. Cross the right ankle on top of the left as you bend the left knee. Now palms can face up. Think that you're weighted or holding two weights into your hands. Let the hips pull back as you drop the hands lower towards the floor. Now hold on to those two heavy balls making a fist, taking the hands behind you, shoulders out of the ears and then dropping those balls behind the back. Keep the left knee bent, drop the right foot beside, 
Squeeze the inseam of the legs together. Inhale, sweep fingertips forward. On the exhale, take the thumbs back. Powerful position. Here in my face. Take a breath in. Exhale, sit down and back. Inhale, come all the way back. I have to stretch up the legs, the front of the body. Exhale, hands to the center line of the chest. Breath in. And breath out. And dive hips into the other side. So you can keep the eyes towards the floor. Cross the left ankle. As you connect, bend into the right knee. You're going to stabilize by these two balls in your hands. Right? You're looking for this heavy weightedness through the arms. So if you imagine those two balls, push against the right thigh. And then make fists to drive the hands back. Once they're behind your shoulders, press against the spine or onto the ribs, dropping the balls. Let the weight fall into the hips, outside of the glute. So I've taken your mind out of it. <laughs> Unwind the left leg. Right away, come into powerful position. Inhale, pull the hips back. Exhale, pull the thumbs back without pulling in towards the shoulders. Sit a little bit lower, exhale. Inhale, come all the way up, straighten the legs. Exhale, hands towards the center line of the chest. Breath in. And that long breath out. Feet mat with distance apart. Take the hands behind the back. Open through the collarbones and the chest. Lift the hands a little bit higher. Take a breath. Hinge halfway, shoulders in line with hips. Keeping the arms straight. Wrist in line with elbows, not locking out the knees. Squeeze the bum together. Drop the hands up to the sacrum. Soften through the knees. Come into a wide forward fold. Don't worry about the arms. Let the shoulder blades come down and glide towards the ears, down onto the ribs. Fingertips touch down. Hop the feet together. Take the right leg behind you wide. Turn the toes to face the right side of the mat into a wide leg for a fold. Take the feet so they're parallel lines. So the tendency is to turn the toes in. Try it the other way so that the feet are parallel to the front and the back of your mat. Now my hands are both equally underneath my face. I'm going to use my left right underneath my face. Bringing it up to the hip. Showing you first and moving with the hip. Sweep the right arm all the way up towards the ceiling. So notice my left hip. It's coming with my right hand. I don't want that. I want to tuck the left hip back. Keep the rotation through my ribs, thoracic spine. Drive through the left. Way more powerful. Take a breath in. Exhale, relax the right hand or the left. Let the right hip sweep with the left hand to start. Then tuck the right hip back. When it wants to be in line with the left, drive through the right hand. Open up the left palm. Look towards the left thumb. Range of motion. Breath in. Breath out. Place the left hand down. Walk the hands further forth. Legs stay where they are. Push against the heels of the hands. Lean into that stretch. It's almost like my hands can lift off the ground. I'm opening the back range of my legs so that that much resistance or force. Come forward and walk the hands. Fingertips forward and the toes forward to the top of the mat. Step back, downward facing dog. So just another deep stretch of that outside hip, and we'll start to turn it back down towards the ground. Inhale, lift the right leg high. Let's bend the left knee, drop the right heel over towards the left, tucking the right shoulder in towards the body.
Right knee comes back through center, low left wrist and hold. Slowly take it back, high plank position, breath in. Exhale, lower chaturanga or towards the floor. Inhale, upward facing dog, cobra. Exhale, roll back through the toes, downward facing dog position. Breath in and breath out. Good, lift the left leg. High onto the right toes, bend the right knee, let the left hip initiate and the left foot be heavy towards the floor. Keep closing the ribs in. On the core, inhale, come up. Exhale, low left knee to low right wrist and hold. Shoulders tuck away from the ears. Hold. Don't lose the breath. Take it back. High plank position, breath in. Breath out. Roll forward. Lower chaturanga to the floor. Inhale, roll forward, upward dog, cobra, sprawl, downward facing dog, find that stretch out. Inhale, lift the right leg high. Step the right foot behind the right wrist, about a foot. Turn the right toes all the way to the right. Turn onto the back of the left foot, drop the left hip down. Right, so as much as you can in that range of motion. That could be here, that's no big deal. Fingertips of the right might be forward. If you can allow the left hip to come down, pull the right elbow back. My hair, it's a nightmare. Let's drive the right hand down. Turn and pivot onto the right toes. Step that back. We're lifting the left. Step it behind the left wrist. Lift the left wrist. Drop the right hip. So from here, hopefully you can see that stretch of the leg. I'm getting right into the outside of my obliques, pulling the left elbow in towards my ribs. Breath in. Breath out. Replant the left hand down. Lift right back through a downward facing dog. Let's flush it out with one more flow. Inhale, roll forward onto the toe mounds. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, roll onto the tips of the toes. Shoulders move forward. Exhale, let the elbows initiate the movement. Inhale, roll forward, open the chest. Exhale, roll over the toes, lift the hips. Downward facing dog. Shoulders under the ears, breath in. And long breath out. All right, taking that wide legged child's pose. Untuck the toes, taking the arms and the palms face up. Right back into that wide legged child's pose. And this time, allow everything to relax down towards the ground. Now, if this is not super comfortable, you come forward onto the shoulders or onto the forearms. You're resting the body closer towards the earth. You're trying to turn off some of the muscles, especially in the shoulders and in the wrists. Let's get deeper into the shoulder and that shoulder girdle. Coming from this direction. You're going to keep the knees wide. That gives you the space you need. Take the right arm underneath the left. So I'm going to drop high into that shoulder. Drop the right ear down towards the floor. Looking left, left fingertips tented. Keep the left fingertips tented. Right palm faces up. Retract the right shoulder into the joint. Drive the top of the right hand into the ground. So it's an active stretch. Take a breath, 
and then relax the left elbow, relax the right hand, and fall into it. Let's come back into an active stretch. Left fingertips tented, stretch the right arm, push into the right hand, top of the right hand. Now pivot the head to face the floor. That helps retract the right shoulder back further. Drop the forehead down. Plant the left hand. Come forward with the right. Pull the knees together. Take an inhale. Open the chest. Drive through the right hand. Exhale. Come into cat position. You position the knees wide. Take the left arm underneath the right. Now remember, you can also be up higher. Notice my hips. They can be stacked over the knees. They don't have to come all the way back to find that stretch. But wherever you land with the hips, you want to activate the stretch first. Push through the right fingertips, top of the left hand, retract the left shoulder. You're searching for the earlobe to find full contact to the floor. And then it's your long breaths in and out. So when we push down, breath in, and then exhale, relax, it gives the shoulders that moment to unwind. Come back to so stretch out the right, reactivate. So you're pinned down, then turn the face towards the ceiling, forehead down. Notice how the left pulls away from the body, the right shoulder, armpit coming closer towards the ground. Relax the palm. Inhale, come forward with the hands. Draw the knees closer together. Tops of the feet down. Inhale into your cow position. Downward dog tilt. Exhale into cat position. Tucking in towards the spine. Come back to neutral. Take a long breath in. Need a longer breath out. Slowly come down onto the bum. I don't know if you show you a few examples of this position. Let's start evenly with just a sukhasana simple seated position. Keeping the knees in line with the floor, hands can gently drop onto the legs. Now this is yet too intense for the knees at this moment. Switch out the legs. We're gonna get a little bit deeper, so we'll see what we can get from there. Resting the hands onto the thighs. Settling the breath back down. Alright, fire log position. So we're trying to get deeper into the outside quad and outside glue. Right heel comes in towards the center. So if you just look down towards your body, you'll notice heel in line with the knee. So straight line, it's kind of like a fire log position. My left heel and my ankle is going to try to find the fleshy part of the left knee and drop it on top. Now, your position might be this, and that is totally okay, right? You might need to find a block, or you might need to find a cushion to let this muscle relax. Once you are in the position, I'll show you from my full range of motion at this moment in time, a range of movement, is my left knee has a tendency not to want to touch that left heel. And I'm okay with that, right? I have something around me that I can drop into so both sit bones are down towards the floor. And then I just notice my breath. You flex the toes, you try to keep the knee and the ankle in a straight position. Some of us need to go a bit deeper to find that resistance or find that pose. Fingertips can tend backwards without rounding the spine. You can start to move the chest above and beyond the shins. Position the body. Maybe you want to put weight through it. And you maintain for a good 
30 seconds, a minute if you can. Remember it's a yin position, not a restorative position. So try not to max it out past like four minutes. But we're gonna hold from two more long breaths. Equalize your inhales to your exhales. slowly unwind. So as we unwind, carefully adjust using the hand to lift the right left heel up, taking the legs long and wrapping it up. Oh shit, okay. So shaking out the legs. Okay. And let's come into the other side. So the same thing, you take the right leg a little longer, position the left hip and position your pelvis so it faces forward taking your right ankle on top. So you're looking for the fleshy part. It's not on the shin, right? it's not onto the thigh, but right on top. One side might be very different from the other, right? And just like a fire log, trying to stack them as evenly as you can, adjusting the flesh of the bum behind you, not out, find your syndrome. You can rest the hands, closing the eyes, set a timer even, or let the breath be your guide. Remember, if you're looking for a depth, you're pulling the chest forward, maybe dropping some weight onto the top shin. Maybe visualizing heavy weights into the hand to drop the shoulders away from the ears. And what's my time, like Claire? I think it's probably about four or five minutes. Okay, good. Take those two more long breaths in. You can sigh that out. No. No more minutes? No, we've got a few. It just paused. Oh. <laughs> so let's unwind, taking the legs, and we'll shake that out. So the legs out, right in from the socket, so you can imagine that femur, that big um, thigh bone, rolling into the pelvis. Rolling in and rolling out. All right, so where we started, soles of the feet together. Let's pull the heels a little closer towards the groin to wrap the hands around the toes and closing off the feet. Notice that my head is a bit dropped down. I'm trying to pin my shoulders onto my back of my body. So what that means is the tips of the shoulder blades searching for the center line of my spine. Opening up the collarbones. Then looking for chin parallel towards the floor. Squeeze the bum, squeeze the heels together. Let the knees pull out and then down. And even though you're squeezing, can the breath still be at the bottom range of the lungs? Expansion and contraction. One more, keep the squeeze. Let's soften and round the spine. Close the legs in. Let's come right down onto the floor. One minute, oh shit, okay. So coming onto the floor, taking the knees wide, the twin shoulder light to the right. Cactus the arms, letting the left shoulder and the left knee hit the ground. So there is a pull in that left side of the body. Shit, okay. So I'm gonna pull you back through center. Let the knees fall over to the left. See if the right knee can find a little bit more depth towards the ground, right shoulder down, breath in, and breath out. All right, coming back through. You're gonna end with the soles of the feet together into a supta body kanasana position on your back. Resting the left hand onto the heart, right hand onto the belly. You're gonna come back here or take that Position Shavasana into that wide star shape, settling the breath and the chest, 
money and everything unwind. But I'm going to close with you here. I do want you to see if you can. And um, you guys on May the 1st. And uh, that will have more online content. We'll have more activities, how to's, um, to do's, and um, craft your with alcohol. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be fun. So I just wanted to say. Thank you, Kaylee. Oh, Kaylee. Thank you, Wendy. Those are for you. Kids. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Miss your faces so much.